Hello, good afternoon. Yes, please, we can hear you. Oh, that's great. So we are now just going to start. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to share the slides and then we start immediately. We are just about six minutes late, so we need to start immediately. And our engagement today is going to be practical. What I'm going to do is that I'm just going to give an introduction of what CV is all about. But before I even go on to that, I need to say that at the end of the day, your schooling, you are expected to be prepared for life. And those that have already completed, I'm talking of the alumni, you are already in life and you should have been prepared for that in the way you should have been prepared for the way of work. So you should have what is referred to as employer four skills. So your duty will be to demonstrate to the employer that you have the skills that are needed to be effective in your job. But how are you going to demonstrate that? How are you going to demonstrate that? The employer might need a particular talent. For example, the employer might need an accountant, a nurse, a finance person, or an economist. So the employer will put forward an advertisement inviting people to apply for that particular job. And on your part as a person looking for a job, your duty will be to demonstrate to the employer that you have the skill and the talent, the know-how needed to be effective in the role that the employer is trying to fill. How are you going to demonstrate that to the employer at the initial stage? You are going to do that to, through the CV that you put forward to the employer. On the CV, you are just going to demonstrate that based on the job description that the employer has put forward, you have all it takes to do what the employer wants you to do at the end of the day. So the work of the CV will be to indicate to the employer that you have the recruiting skills, the abilities to be effective in the role. And when you are invited for an interview through the CV, the CV has done its job. To that essence, the CV is supposed to give you the opportunity to be invited for an interview. And when the CV does that, the CV has done its work. And your responsibility as a job applicant is to go to the interview process and then demonstrate to the employer that what you've, you've put on the CV is in fact justifiable. So let me put it again, the CV is expected to give you the opportunity for an interview. And when you have the opportunity for an interview, the CV has done its job. So what it means is that the CV must be effective in getting you to the interview room. So that's what we are just going to do at the initial stage. So let me share a slide, then we start immediately. So I hope you see the slide. Ah, you should understand what's effective CV and covering letter are. Second, you should appreciate the importance of having an effective CV. 
The third aspect is that you should understand what should be in an effective CV. The next fourth objective is to develop a basic CV. You are just going to understand why I call it a basic CV. Then the fifth objective is to write basic covering letter. So these are the five objectives that we are going to try to meet at the end of the day. And when we put all of this together, the objective at the end of this workshop is that you should be able to write an effective CV. So that's what we want to achieve at the end of the day. All these five objectives can be summed up into one main objective, which is at the end of the day, you should gain the capacity to write an effective CV. And when we say an a CV is, is effective, what we mean here is that that CV should have the capacity to get you to the interview room. Let me emphasize again, an effective CV is the CV that gives you the opportunity for an interview. And when you get that letter indicating that you are invited for an interview, the CV has done a job. And for the CV to be able to give you the opportunity for an interview, the CV should be an effective CV. So we are just going to understand what makes a CV effective. But before we start everything, we should understand what a CV is all about. That is very, very important. What CV is all about. Because if you do not understand what a CV is, the question is, how are you going to put together such a CV? So let's start by looking at what a CV is all about. When we say a CV, a CV is just a marketing document. It's just your marketing document. And that document is subjective and personal to you. CV is something that is going to market you to the job owner or to the manager. So it's a marketing document. It's a document that is going to tell the manager of the organization that you are the best person that ought to be selected for that particular role. You have all it takes to contribute effectively to the organization. So at the end of the day, what are you doing? You are marketing yourself to the employer or to the manager. And if you are going to market yourself and tell the employer that you are the best person, then you should do that job very, very well. In other words, a CV it also, in a way, provides a portfolio of your skills and experience that are relevant to the job that you are applying for. So what it means position. The CV should also be informative, but it should also be what? Brief. Because the employer might not have the time to read a very, very long CV. Assume that the employer, in a way, the employer, in a way, has received, let's say, 1,000 CVs. The employer might not get the opportunity to what? Read through that bulky CV. So the CV ought to be concise but it should also contain all the information that the employer is looking for. The other aspect is that the CV should be what? Should be persuasive. It's a persuasive sales document that is expected to sell you to the employer that you are the best person that ought to be given the opportunity. Are you with me? Yes. Okay, so that is very, very important. So that is what a CV is all about. It's a document that you present to the organization that tells the organization that you are the best out of all yeah. the people that have applied for that particular role. And for that matter, should be given what? 
the response, should be given the opportunity over all the other people. Should be given the opportunity all over what all the other people. So what, that is what a CV is all about. Now that we know what a CV is all about, that a CV is a document that sells you to the employer that you are the best. The question is, when are you supposed to use a CV? Or why have a CV? The first point here is that a CV is mostly requested or required by the employer or recruiting agency so that they'll be able to make the decision whether to invite you for an interview or not to invite you for an interview. So why do you need a CV? You need a CV because when an organization is recruiting people, they request for that. And when they are requesting for that and you do not have it, you are going to be disadvantaged. That means you should have your CV always with you so that when they are requested by the employer, you'll be in position to supply them that particular document. Also, when you are making a speculative application, you also need a CV. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that the employer has not put forward any application that they need people. But you've just taken the application. You want to what? Take the application letter to them. They've not requested any application, but you are taking the application for them, telling them that you are what? You are around. Then you are the person that you are what? Looking for. That is a speculative what? Application. And when you are making such a speculative application, you need what? A CV. Why? You are not going to be there to tell the employer that you have the skill, you have the experience, you have all this. So the CV is going to what? Talk for you. In other words, a CV is a document that talks for you when you are not what? Present at the employer's what? Organization. So you need a CV when you are making what? Speculative application. Also, sometimes when you are doing postgraduate studies, you are going to do master's or PhD. Some, some institutions what require that you add your CV to your application letter for that master's or PhD. Why do they need that? They need that so that they'll be able to what, understand you what more. They need to know the skills that you have. They need to know your abilities so that they'll, make the, they'll be able to what, size you up and make the decision whether you can be what? Do that postgraduate work or not. Also, sometimes when some people organize career fairs, when you are going there, you have to take what? Your CV along so that immediately you can sell yourself to the employers that are what? Around. That is very, very important. And thankfully, Garden City Career Service, we are now going to organize, very soon we organize a career fair. So a lot of organizations will come and when they come, the possibility is that they might want to recruit people at that particular ca career fair. So when you are going for that career fair, you should have your CVs handy. So you can easily what, give it to them and immediately they can read it and know what you have, what you don't have, whether you are the one that you are what, looking for. So these are some of the instances where a CV is needed. So basically, CV is needed when you are applying for a position in an organization, whether it's sought out for or it's a speculative what, application, and also when you are going for postgraduate what, studies. So that is very, very important. Just a minute. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So that is very, very imp important. Now we know what a CV is. CV is all about a document that sells you to people, indicating what you can do so that they'll be able to make decisions on, on you. We also know when to have what a CV. And we've realized that you need a CV basically when you are applying for what? A job. Now, the question is, why do employers use CVs? Why do they use CVs? The first is that they use CVs so that they'll be able to what? Shortlist applicants. 
that have applied for a job. What do I mean by that? When organizations request for people, a lot of people apply. Let's say they need to fill only 10 positions. The 1,000 people have what applied for that particular position. They will not be interested in inviting all of you for an interview. So what are they going to do? What they are going to do here is that they will have to go through your CVs. No people that are truly qualified for what that position. It shouldn't be that they won't have to invite everybody. And at the end of the day, they realize that about 900 people do not what, qualify for such, such a position. It will be just a waste of their time. So they need to go through something to know those that are truly qualified. And when they know those that are truly qualified, these are the people that are going to be invited for such an interview. And these are people that we say are what? Shortlisted. And those that do not qualify, the organization will write a nice letter to them indicating that they are not qualified for that particular position. So employers need CVs to shortlist people for an interview. They also want to find out how you represent yourself on paper. How you are able to what, sell yourself. For example, when they are going to recruit a person for, let's say, a salesperson position, you are going to sell the organization. Possibly you are going to market the organization's what, products. First, they want to find out how you are able to market yourself or sell yourself. So if you are not able to market yourself properly on the CV, then the idea here is that you will not be able to what, do a very good job when they give you that opportunity. Sometimes also, they use a CV so that they will be able to what, make very fast judgment on your suitability for that particular job. So that is very, very important. They basically want to find out whether your skills, your know-how match what they are looking for. So these are the reasons why organizations what, use or require CV for from job applicants. From job applicants. So that is very, very important. Now we go on to the next one. Okay, so that is very, very important. So we go on to the next slide. What makes a CV effective? What makes a CV effective? Then I've already indicated that for the CV to be effective, it should give you the opportunity to be invited for an interview. So a CV that is not able to give you the opportunity to be invited for an interview is not an effective CV. That is the whole duty of a CV, is to give you the opportunity to be invited for an interview. The question here is, how can you put forward such an effective word? CV. So for a CV to be effective, first, it should be targeted to the job for which you are applying. This point is very, very important. Every advertisement that is put forward include two main things. It includes what is referred to as the job description, and it includes what is referred to as the person specification. The job description, in a way, describes the job that you are going to do. Then the person specification, in a way, defines the type of person that can do the job. In other words, it defines the skills, the talent, the know-how that that person what should have. That is very, very important. Every job advertisement that is put forward includes job description, description about the job, and then we have what is referred to as the person specification, what the job is all about, and the type of person that is needed to do the job. And your CV should be targeted at these two things. What it means here is that in your CV, you should demonstrate that you have what it takes to do the job. You have the skills, you have the abilities, 
that are necessary for you to perform at the highest level in the role that the employer wants to fill. So your CV should, in a way, be aligning with the job description and also the person specification. An effective CV should also be accurate, interesting, and up to date. Accurate means that it should be given the right information. You should not be lying on your CV. The reason why you should not be lying on your CV is that a very good or any good employer will do due diligence. They will not, they will want to what? Satisfy themselves that what you've put on the CV is actually what? Truth or factual. It should be what? Interesting. It should also be what? Up to date. That is very, very important. An effective CV should also accompany covering letter. And the covering letter is the letter that moves with the CV. It introduces, in a way, the CV. We are also going to look at how to write a covering letter in this particular workshop. So to have a very effective CV, it should achieve the following. First, you should identify the employer's criteria. That is very, very important. Before you put forward any CV or you write any CV, you should, in a way, be certain what the employer is looking for. Because based on what the employer is looking for, you are going to put together an effective CV. So the employer is going to use the criteria as, first, are you having the key skills needed to get the work done? Are you having the relevant what experience? So these are the criteria. So in a way, you should be able to understand how the employer is going to what? Select the right person. It's when you know the criteria of the employer that you'll be able to put together a very effective CV. So that is very important. Okay. Now we go on to what the content of the CV should be. And the content of the CV might vary from one person to the other person, depending on the job that you are applying for. That, in a way, will determine the content of that CV. One particular job application might require that you add A. Another job application might not require such a particular thing. For example, when you are applying for a job in academia, when you are applying for a job as a lecturer, it is very, very important that you include your publication. Because in academia, research and publication is very vital. But when you are applying for another job, for example, a sales position job, your pu publication really does not what matter. So we shouldn't have a one fit all kind of a CV. Every CV ought to be customized to reflect the type of job that you are what, looking for. But for this particular workshop, we are going to consider an effective CV to contain the following elements or to have the following content. First, you should provide a session for your personal details. We are going to look at what personal details should entail. Then the second thing is that you should have a space for what is referred to as a personal statement. Some people call it career goals. Other people also call it personal profile. You should have a session for that. Then you should also have another session for education or education or educational qualification. Then you should have another session for your work experience. The work experience in a way is going to chronicle the experience, the relevant experiences that you have that are needed for the particular job that you are applying for. Then you should also have another session for your skills. You can also have another session for your professional membership and affiliation. Another session can also cater for achievements and the rewards that you've achieved. Then you can also have another session for the volunteer work that you've done. For example, right from school, you're applying for the job and you do not have so much of what work experience, but you've realized that you've done a lot of voluntary work. 
you need to accentuate on that. You need to what? put more emphasis on what? That voluntary way. So that you are going to what? Justify why possibly that voluntary way make up for the work experience that you lack. Then you also need to include a session for references. So these are some of the components or some of the elements that should feature in an effective CV. And as I said, these are not exhaustive. What I'm saying here is that depending on the job that you are applying for, some other components should be present. And some of these components here also might not be what relevant, depending on the type of job that you are going to apply for. Any questions so far? Any questions so far so that we can go to the practical aspect of putting together a CV? So we started by looking at what a CV is all about. Then I've indicated that a CV is your selling document. It's your marketing document. It's a document that is going to market you or is going to sell you to the employer that you have what it takes to be employed. It provides a folio of what? Your skill, indicate the skill, the experiences that you have that are relevant to the position that is being what? Advertised. And because of that, I said that CV should be what? Very informative, but very what? Concise. Then we've also looked at when you are going to need what? A CV. I've said that you need a CV when you are applying for the, you are applying for what? A job. You also need a CV in some situations when you are applying for a postgraduate what? Study. And I've I said that your CV ought to be what? Effective. It should be effective because a CV is supposed to get you an what? Interview. So if a CV is not able to give you the opportunity for an interview, the CV has not achieved its job. And that CV possibly wasn't what? Effective. But if a CV gets you the opportunity for an interview, then that CV can be considered to be an effective CV. Why? Because it has been able to what? Do its job. So that is very, very important. Then we looked at what makes a CV an effective what CV. I said a CV is effective when it's targeted to the job for which you are what applying for. For that matter, there shouldn't be one fit all kind of what CV. You have one CV, every job you send to what that it might not be effective. Why? It might not contain, possibly, it might not contain the relevant experiences that job, that particular job what needs. It might contain skills or experiences that are irrelevant to the position that you are what applying for. An example. Okay, Nico, question. Nico, any question? No, please. Okay. So that, that's good. I had an indication that you raised your hand. Okay. So for a CV to be effective, it should be tailored to that particular what? Job. When you are applying for the job at the bank, the CV you need to send there is or should be obviously what different from the CV you should send when you are applying for a lecturer's what job. It shouldn't be that you have one CV everywhere you take what that CV to. A CV ought to be customized. That is very, very important. And how are you going to customize that? You can customize a CV when Looking at the ad advertisement, you know the job description. That means okay. the job, the, the, the task that you are going to what, perform. You are supposed to sweep. You are supposed to greet people. You are supposed to sell. That is the job description. Then person specification. Then they will say that they will need a person with SS what? Certificate. They will need a person let's say, with two years experience in what, sales. They'll need a person who is able to what, smile. That's what it's referred to as what, the person specification. 
So when you look at an advert, you have to look at the job description. That means what the work entails, what you are going to do. Then you also have to look at what? The person specification. What type of person are they looking for? Job description, the job that you are going to do. Person specification, the type of person that the organization what, needs. When you know these two, then you ask yourself, how do I provide evidence to the employer that I can do the job? Indicating that I have the relevant skills and the relevant what, experiences. This will indicate what you put in your CV. You realize that one skill, looking at what you are going to do and what you are looking for, that skill is not needed. So you do not need, do not have to what, put it in your CV. But looking at other skill, you realize that, oh, that's what they are, what? Need, that, that is what the organization what, needs. What does it mean? Then you have to put it, what, in your CV. So you should customize your CV or you should make up your CV to satisfy the job description and the person specification aspect of the advertisement. When you are able to achieve that, your CV is likely going to be what? Effective. Then you also have to put a very effective what? Covering letter when you are going to deliver the CV. So the CV should always go with a covering letter. In other words, the covering letter is what is going to introduce what? CV, the CV to the employer. So we've done that particular one also. Then I said that these are going to be the components of what? The CV. Personal details, personal profile, educational qualification, work experience, skills, professional membership and affiliation, achievement and awards, voluntary work. All these components, in a way, should align with the job description and the specific person what specification. So this component of the CV or the contents of the CV in a way should provide evidence of your suitability for that particular what role. That's what the CV is supposed to do. It's going to market you. So it should demonstrate to the employer that you have what it takes to get the job what done. You have all it takes when it comes to the person that you are what they are looking for. And in fact, you are the best person that they are what looking for. When you are able to do that with your CV, and the CV is able to sell you or market you well, that CV can be said to be effective. Now, we are just going to do practicals. So now get your CV template that we sent you. Get it closer to you. Get it closer to you so that we can start the practical aspect of the CV. At the end of the day, when we finish this workshop, you should have what the CV with you. We are not going to finish for you to go and then sit somewhere and make your CV. At the end of this, you should have written what your basic CV that you can what improve. So you have your CV template with you. I don't know what you are talking about. Okay, on the WhatsApp page, we posted curriculum or CV template. So uh, okay, check, so check your I'm WhatsApp page. Fine. We have it there. I'm using the because of the CV template. That's what we are just going to do to do the practical this afternoon. So do you have it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead, please. Somebody wanted to ask a question. Do you have your template with you so that we can go ahead and start? So, so I meant to say we are ready. What, do you have it with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you show by hands those that are having their template with them?
Say. 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 Hello, go ahead. And it's on my phone, no. And the same phone that um that's it's on your phone. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any paper with you? You can just take a paper. Okay. Then when you say personal details, then you write something there. You are going systematic so that at the end of the day, you'll be able to put. So just get a paper with you. Okay. If you do not have your template with you or it's on your phone, then just get a paper with you. So when we say personal detail, then I teach you what it should be all about. Then you write something there. So those that are having their template with them, great. If you do not have it, just have a paper with you. Okay, now we can just go ahead. I said the first aspect of the CV is the personal details. Now let's go ahead and look at what the personal detail is all about. This is an example of what should constitute personal detail. This is an example of what should constitute a personal detail. So on the template, or on a piece of paper, under the personal detail, just write your name. This person's name is Nicholas Kwame Mafia. So if you are Nico, Nicholas Kwame, just write Nicholas there. So write something. We are doing practicals right now. So the first aspect of a CV is personal detail. So on the template, personal details, the box, write the following, write your name, write your postal address, then write your telephone number. Then if you have your email, write your email address also. Then this is optional. If you have your LinkedIn profile, this is a link that can take them to your what? LinkedIn profile to know more about you. But this is optional. You might not need to what? Add it. So which one? The, the last one, the LinkedIn oh, prof okay. uh, profile link. The last one. LinkedIn, okay. this is optional. If you want the employer to know more about you, maybe you've done very good job there. You want to what? CV is all about what? Telling the person that you are the best. So if you've done very good job in your LinkedIn account, definitely you want the employer to know. So you can just add what? A link there, but it's optional. Do you get that? Yeah. Was somebody asking a question? Up. So have you written it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, so sir. Sometimes also some people add their date of birth to this personal details. Okay. It's not so much relevant, but sometimes when you read the advertisement, you get that they want yes. a person under the age of what 35. That one is very, very important to them. Okay. If that is the case. They accentuated on what the age, then you should be able to what add that because they want to disqualify those that are above that age. So if you do not add it, the possibility is that they will not be able to make decision whether to invite you for an interview or not. So if age is very, very important to them and you have or you are in the age bracket that they are looking for, then what do you have to do? You need to add it. Do you get that? But if you are above that age, and you want to give it a try, then don't add the what the date. I don't know if you are getting me. Sir, come again. I yes, said that the personal yes, details, some people add the date of birth. Mm, okay. that. And yes, I'm saying that this one, somebody will say it's not by force. Look at that. Okay. It's not by force to add your yes, date sir. of birth to that. Notwithstanding, in some job advertisement, they will just state that they need a person who is below 35 what? years of age. That means age is of importance what? to them. So they will not they want to what? use your age either to what? invite you for an interview or not. Because age is important to them, if you do not add the age of birth, if you are within the age bracket, then it's in your interest to add your what? date of birth. So that they will know what? that you qualify for that particular word position. In that case, add it a date of what birth. Date of birth important. 
On the well, other I hand, if they are saying that they need a person who is below what, 35 age, 35 years of age, but you realize that you have what it takes and age shouldn't be what, a factor, and you want to give it a try, then it means that don't add your date of what, birth. Because if you add your date of birth, that will be an element that they can use to what, disqualify you. But if you do not add your date of birth, they will think that, oh, maybe you made a mistake. So let's invite that person. And when you go for an interview and you go and what? Justify that you are the best person. Looking at your skill, you are able to do well in an interview. The possibility is that they might overlook, overlook the fact that you do not have what? You do not qualify based on what? Your age. I don't know if you are getting me. It's important. Yeah. Are you getting that point? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So if they are saying that they need a person below 35 and you are below 35, you must add your date of birth. Other than that, they might dis what? disqualify you. It's in your advantage. Oh, you okay, sir. It. But if you are be over the age that they are looking for, don't add it. Because if you, are, you add it, it could be the basis of what? Your disqualification. The CV is supposed to what? Help you not to harm you. So if you add something that is going to disqualify you, you are shooting yourself in the foot. So that one is what? Very, very important. So have you finished with the personal details so that you can go forward? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Sir. Have you finished with the personal details? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So yes, now sir. you have your personal details component of what? Your CV. Now we are going to the next one. Which is what? Your personal profile. It's your personal profile. You do not have to add in your CV personal profile, personal statement, career goal. Just choose one. You can make a personal profile or pers a what? personal statement or career work goal. Just choose one and use that. Then what should come to this particular aspect? Let me explain. This particular aspect of the CV is supposed to summarize what the CV is all about. It should be a summary of your strengths, your abilities that is supposed to convince the employer that you have what it takes to get the job done. So if the employer does not have the time to read everything and he wants to make a decision based on the personal profile, you should put your best foot forward. So the personal profile, in a way, should be a nice summary of your CV, accentuating or indicating why you qualify for the job. Now, let me read this personal profile of that somebody. He said, I'm a highly motivated and enthusiastic academic of over 11 years of teaching and research experience. Possibly this one is applying for what? A lecturer, ship what position. So he's saying that he's what highly yeah. motivated and enthusiastic academic, academic of what over 11 years of teaching and research experience. Also, I have over a decade professional experience as a business consultant. My educational and professional experiences have provided me with a rare capacity to link theory and practice, helping me to contribute effectively. <laughs> in developing the next generation of business leaders. Then it goes a lot, it goes on to what? Sell himself. So when it comes to the personal profile, find a way of what? Nicely summarizing the whole of what? The CV. It should be in position to what? Draw great light on you. So that is very, very important. So try and write something about yourself in the personal summary. Try to write a summary of your skills and abilities that in a way can convince an employer to give you the chance. So just try, try. We are not going to, we are not aiming at perfection here. Just try and write something. Brag, brag here, try and write something about yourself. Indicating your skills, your experiences, 
that room positive what light on you. So we'll try to write something. Are you writing something? Yes, sir. Yes, just write something. Uh huh. Sell yourself. What are your great yes, qualities? Sir. What are your great qualities? What are your great skills that should be of interest to an employer? Just write something so that we can go ahead. Okay. Have you written something? Who said we are on this? Yes. So, when you are applying for the job and you look at the advertisement, you know what you are going to do and the person that you are looking for, it should influence what you write here. Do you get that? Uh -huh. You should have at the back of your mind the, the task that you are going to do and the person that you are looking for. Then use these ideas to put forward a very convincing summary of what? Of yourself or a profile of yourself. Then we go on to the next one, which is your education or your qualification, educational what qualification. This one also, you need to put forward the relevant what once. You need to put forward what the relevant ones. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Now let yes. me share my slide again. Okay. Do you have my slide now? Yes, yes please. please. Okay. Then let's go on to where we ended. Where we were. So we were at the personal profile. Were you able to put forward something on the personal profile? Yes, sir. I need your feedback so that we can go. Yes, Have sir. You put something yes, on the yes, sir. Okay. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. then that's great. The idea is that at the end of the day, you should have what your CV with you so that you'll be able to type it well. Then you improve it as time what goes on. So that is very, very important. So we are going on to the next one, which is your educational qualification. Here also, you need to bring in what? The relevant educational what? Qualification. How we are getting that? Uh -huh. Then yes, you have yes. to arrange it in a chronological what order. The current one first, then the last. Do you get that? This one possibly was applying for electrical position. So you say PhD, then this, 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 then you go down. So you bring all the relevant what qualification with the dates. So you also put something there under the qualification. So you are doing degree. So BSc nursing, Garden City University. Do you get that? Then you can write what two thousand and four. Do you get that? Uh huh. Go, go started. Can you put in the bracket 2004? So it's an ongoing thing. Do you get that? Uh -huh. Or you can write what we, 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 BSC, Garden City, what, University, then you make it ongoing. Do you get that? Then you go on to the next level, which is what? Your SSC. What is? 
<laughs> Figure out where did you have your SSC? What I'm saying, you should be writing it. Maybe you had it at, let's say, Premier College. So Premier College, from when to when, you have to put it there. Then, possibly that is the most relevant one. You might not need to go on to what? Your KG or your primary school might not be what? Relevant. <laughs> so now for your educational okay. qualification, you can add what? Garden okay. City, ongoing course, then BSc, and possibly if there's any other relevant course that you've done, you can also what? Bring it here. So try and put something so that we can go for it. Are you putting something on education or qualification? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Can I go for it? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So yes, now sir. I do not have much here. So BSc, that is the university. Hello. Look at that. Then WASI, the school that you attended. Then you read when you started, when you ended. Mm -hmm. Then when you have other educational qualifications that are relevant, yeah. you can also work. Yes. Add them here. Okay. So if you've done that, then we are going forward. We are going to work experience. Okay. Look at that. Work experience. Work experience. Here, you are going to. Why? What, what do you think work experience is important? Work experience is important because they believe the past, the past can be a what? Very good predictor of the future. Let me say it again. They need to know what you've done because they think that what you've done can influence what you can do now and in the future. So every serious employer is interested in what you've done. So you need to put forward a very convincing evidence of your work what experience. Now, students, you do not have what a lot of what work experience. But here you can be somehow what creative, depending on the role that you are what applying for. Okay. Especially your mother sells what bread. And you've been helping your mother for two years. You've been engaged in what? Personal sales. Personal marketing, that is a relevant what experience. I hope you are getting that. Yes, sir. Have some of yes, you sir. have some of you helped, or have you been helping your parents in their business? Yes, yes sir. sir. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, what you did can qualify as a relevant what experience. Can somebody give an example of what he or she has helped? the parents to do in maybe the family business. So that will demonstrate that that is what a relevant experience. Benedicta, do you have something to say? Um, so please, by counting, helping her count her money and maybe in the business. her letters. Uh -huh. her that breakfast. can be a relevant what? Experience. Do you get that? So you need to sit down and look at all that you've done, either in the family business or time part time business that you did after SS. After SS, some of you were what working. You were engaged as sales girls. You were engaged possibly as what uh, cashiers. So you need to sit down and put all that you've done, so that you can be able to what put it forward as a relevant what experience. So now. Let's try and put something here. The experiences that you've had. Okay. Lily, Bonita, you want to say something? Bonita, your hands are up. Do you want to say something? That please. Yeah, your that hands are up. No. <laughs> okay, okay. There you can go. So try and write something here. You might not have a lot of experience, but look back all that you've done. Maybe after SS, you work somewhere. It can qualify as a relevant experience. Now we are not applying to a particular, or we are not applying for a particular role. So any experience put here so that we can go for it. You work as a salesperson. So 
salesperson, where did you work? Ninja Printing Press. At what time? Maybe 2001 to 2002. That is an experience. You were helping in the family business. Your mother possibly will bake bread, then you go and sell. That possibly can be what? So add it, you write the name of your shop, then the dates. That is very, very important. So are you writing something? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. we, I said you are not looking at perception, uh, perfection here. So write all that comes into what? Your mind. At the end of the day, you are going to sit down and refine it. Okay. Now, let me also say something. After each of the experiences, you can write something nice. Let's say about, you can write something nice about what you achieve working there. For example, look at what I'm writing. I was selected as the best lecturer or whatever. Oh, the yeah, let's say 2003. That is demonstrating what, what you've achieved. As I said, the CV is supposed to sell you. So whatever great that you've had done, possibly you can bring it here. Somebody will say, I was able to what? Exceed my targets. And that what improve the performance of what? The whole organization. So we can put on your job experience just after each. That's very, very important. Then let's say you go to the lead, yeah, the lead consultant, then strike. I can say that I was able to to help turn around 20 dying SMEs. In, in the year, let's say 2003. Bigger. Uh -huh. This comes in when you have what more experience. But now that you have very little, a little experience, just state what the job, the place, and the time. Then we go forward. Have you have you been able to put something? Yes, sir. So have you been able to list something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then let's go for it. The next one is what? The skills. So you look at the skills that are needed. Then based on that, you indicate on your CV whether you have the skill. You have to, the CV is supposed to what? put the bright light on you. So bring in the skills that you have that are relevant to what? The position that you are applying for. Somebody is saying that I'm expert yourself, Microsoft, what? Wait. I have active listening what skills. To underscore, put some of the good skills that you have so that you can go forward. Put some of the skills you have on the template. Or if you don't have the template, a piece of paper that you've got written, put some of the skills that you have there. So just two minutes, then we go forward. Are you writing? Yes, sir. Okay. Just put something, then we go. Then after the skills, we are going on to the next one, which is what? Professional membership and affiliation. This might not be applicable to you now because you might not be a member of any professional body or you might not be affiliated to what? Any professional what body. So you can possibly skip this one. You can possibly what skip this one. But if you are a member of any professional organization, you can list them here. Especially 
when that professional re uh, body is relevant to the position you are applying for. So for the nurses, you can say that you are a student member of what professional bodies? Nurses, what professional bodies do you have? NFC. Uh, maybe a student member of whatever yeah. professional body that you have. Then the accounting student. If you are a student member of ACCA, affiliate, whatever, you can list them here. Other than that, we skip. Then you can also have an achievement here. You can put forward all the achievement what that you have. Maybe you were the best SME owner for the year 2000. You are the best reviewer of ABCD journal for the year 2000. So he also bring in relevant achievements. Look at that. Uh -huh. Bring in the relevant what achievements or awards. You might have what won a lot of awards, but not all the awards might be what relevant. So you look at the job description, personal specification, then you select the best oh. achievements or the awards that you what gained. So now look back. What are some of the achievements you've gained so far? Were you the best student in SS? You can put it there. Were you given the award as the most intelligent person or the world behaved person when you were in SS? Whatever. So whatever achievement, the award you've has received so far, list them here so that we can go ahead. Or awards have you received so far? List all of them. Why? Because we are not looking at any particular what application for you to select which one is relevant. So list every award that you have. Later, when you are going for a particular, then you can select which one is what relevant and which one is not what relevant. So I want to ask a question. Go on, please. Um. Um, can position be added? Maybe you were the SRC president or a departmental rep because you can see to the good of your maybe your mate in class. Can you add those tasks? Yeah, that in a way, a position that you got occupied. And that position gave you the opportunity to what acquire relevant skills and experiences. <laughs> so as part of your CV, you can have a session that indicates positions what occupied. Or even under achievement, you can put it in a way that I was the SRC president for the year 2002. In a way, it's some kind of what? Achievement. Your colleagues, it's not everybody that was able to what, achieve that height. So either you bring in another session that says positions occupied, then you list all the relevant positions that you've occupied. If you do not want that one, you can find a way of putting it under achievement and awards. You were the H -A what SRC secretary for the year 2000 and this. It's an achievement. I don't know what it took for you to become that. Do you that? So the answer is yes. You can put it here. Okay, Take it thank out. you. Uh -huh. So list all the achievements and the awards that you have. Or oh, then later, when you are applying for a particular job, you'll be able to select which one is relevant and which one is what not relevant. So the idea okay. here is that every time you should have a basic CV with you. So when you are going for a particular job, you look at your CV, you look at what the job wants, then you customize what your CV. So okay. when I'm applying for a banker position, I will what? Look at my basic CV, improve it, customize it to fit that position. Then when I'm going in for an accountant position, I will not take the, uh, the same CV that I took for a banker position to 
the accountant word position. I need to uh, customize it. Okay. I need to bring in more relevant experiences, then take away relevant word experiences. I need to bring in more relevant skills and take away irrelevant word skills. That's what customization is what is all about. So at the end of this, you are going to have what? Basic CV. Then, depending on the job you are going to look for, then you customize it. So when you have the basic CV with you, then the responsibility will be what? To fill in the gaps. Any experience that you gain, any award that you, you, you get as time goes on, you go and what? Update your CV. So the job for you at the end of this, this, uh, this workshop will be to put your CV, what you are writing nicely, then you update it with new what, experience, new skills, new abilities. I hope you are getting me. Yes, sir. Okay. Then you go on to what? Volunteer work. This is very, very, what? very, very important. Engaging okay. in volunteer work can be one of the ways that you can gain what? Experience. Some organization might not want to what? Give you the chance because they will not be able to what? Pay you. But you know what you want to achieve. You want to gain experience. So you can say that you are doing what? Voluntary work. Then through the voluntary work, you get the relevant what? Experience. So when you gain the relevant experience through this voluntary work, you might not need to bring in this session, voluntary work. The experience can now go on to what? Work experience. Or you can separate the, the paid work experience from the voluntary work experience. You all qualify as what? An experience. So under voluntary, you can say that Mentorship Africa, the organization, you did it from where? This and that. Then you can write a small thing about what you did served as a group of what secondary school what, students so you can list some of the voluntary work that you have done that in a way will indicate the experience that you've had you've gained so that is also very very important then we come on to the real uh, references that is the last part then you can add about what two references and this person the references are dr powerful ninja then the PO box does the address. Then you need to add the person's what email because they might need to what contact and the person also what phone number. Do you get that? Uh -huh. So that's how you need to what be free with people so that you'll be able to use them as what referees. But before you use any person as a referee, let the person be aware of that. If you use me as a referee, and I'm not aware of that, if they send me an email that you sent use me as a referee, and I have to what provide the, a recommendation or whatever, I will not be able to what give them what they are looking for. But if I know that you've used me as your reference or your referee, anytime they contact me, I'll be in position to what give them nice thing about you. Okay, so sir. you need to have referees. Then let the, your referees know that you are using them as what? Referees. So that is very, very important. And so that brings us to the components of what? The CV. So now look at what you've written. Look at what you've written so far. Do you have, have you written something? Yes. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Have you been able to fill? Yes, sir. Have you been able to fill the template? Yes, sir. That's good. That's good. So all that we are going to do is that you are at the end of this day. After this, you are going to sit down, then type it nicely. Thank you. Yeah. When you type it nicely and you want a professional touch, you can always come to the career center. Then we'll help you to what fine tune it. Is that okay? Yes, yes sir. Okay, uh -huh. sir. Don't worry yes, sir. that we're not able to write a lot under work experience. Okay. There's no problem because you do not have it. What it tells you is that you have to find a way of gaining what? Experience. You have to find a way of what? Gaining experience. That's why you should be thinking about having what? Attachment. Seminars, intense in some organizations during vacation and all those things. 
So any experience you gain now from now going, you just go and what update your CV. Okay. Any skill that you get, you go and what update your CV. If you become the class captain, go and update your CV. You are now the class captain. <laughs> Look at that. Uh -huh. So at the end of the day, you always be prepared to submit a CV when necessary. You just have to what customize it. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So now I can assume that you have what you've written a basic CV that you are going to improve with time. Now let's go on to the covering letter. I said every application goes with a covering letter. And the covering letter is what you call your application. You get that? I'm writing in response to your adversary's position on this day. This is it. That is the covering letter that we are what, talking about. The covering letter is supposed to what? Cover our company, the CV. It's supposed to introduce what? The CV. So you need to write a very convincing covering what? Letter. And we are going to look at the components of what? Effective covering letter. So that is very, very important. And the covering letter, in a way, gives you the chance to show interest. Do you get that? It gives you the chance to what? Show interest, to show that you are very motivated and enthusiastic about what? The role. How you put the covering letter will provide the opportunity to tell the employer. Just the employer going through the CV will not tell the employer that you are interested. Obviously, you are interested. That's why you are bringing the application. But the current letter will express it. You get that? Your interest, your motivation, and your enthusiasm for the role. Then you also need to personalize your covering letter to fit the job. I've already indicated that in every advertisement, we have job description. That indicates what you are, the job is what, all about, what you are going to do. And person specification, that indicates the person they are looking for. So in the covering letter, you need to justify, you need to tell them that you have what it takes to do the job that they want you to add, come and do. That is what you need to add, do about that. So it takes the normal letter format. Do you get that? Are there, Upper right corner, you have your, your thing there, then you come down. That I hope you, I, I definitely know that you know how to write a formal letter. It is a formal letter format. So you have your personal address at the upper right corner of your sheet. Then under that you date, then you come to what? The employer's details, they also address, writing a formal letter. Then you go here, this, this, this. Dig that. So that you take the formal letter idea. So that is very, very important. Then you also need to, in a way, include the reference. That is also very, very important. So that is very, very important. And when you know specifically the person you are writing to, Maybe they said that address it to maybe Mr. Godfrey. It will be important since you know what the person you are addressing to say, dear Mr. Godfrey, than just saying dear say. It's very, very important. So if you know the person specifically that you are writing to, you can use the person's name, dear Mr. Godfrey, dear Dr. Godfrey, or whatever. Do you get that? Person like it when you mention their name, then just using the essay. But if you do not know the person specifically you are writing to, then you, that's where you make you do what the essay. That is very, very important. It's a very good point that you need to what be aware of. Then another thing is that after writing your covering letter, you need to what check your typos your grammar, make sure that they are what? Right. <coughs> they are what? A lot of this. It says very bad things about you. Grammatical what? Errors. Uh, 
then using shortcut. Don't use shortcuts there. WhatsApp languages, don't use it there. Don't use yeah and all those things. It's a formal undertaking. That it's a formal thing that you are doing. So write what? Very well. Now we go on to the content of the query letter. So now you already have the address, your address at the upper right corner. Then we have, we go down, we have the what? The person, the organization's address. Then you've addressed, well, dear Mr. This. Do you get that? Then you have what? Application for employment as this, this, this. When there's a reference, you add it. Do you get that? Then possibly underlined or bolded. Then you come to the actual content of the letter. For the content of the letter, you should have an introduction. What do I mean by that? You have to introduce yourself. I am Mr. Kwejo, this, 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 and I'm applying for the advertised position on the said day, this, this, this. So introduce yourself, who you are and why you are what? Applying. Do you get that? So the first aspect of the content of the letter is who you are. I am Dr. KKZ. Do you get that? Why are you applying? This letter is res what? It's in response to the advertised position for a sales what person. With reference, what reference you've already put it up there. So if you don't put it up there, then you indicate that. Then after introducing yourself, then you go to the next. Why are you interested in this job and this what employer? Put in different way. Why are you interested in this job? And why do you want to work for what that organization? You need to write something here. Show interest and knowledge of what the company. Before you put forward an application, and obviously before you go for an interview, you have to understand the organization you want to work, go and work for. So under why you are interested in the job and organization, you need to show interest of what, of your knowledge of the company and the posts. So you need to do a lot of research before you put forward what, your application. You shouldn't apply to an organization you know nothing about. Now it's easy to get information so you can what, search and understand the organization so that you'll be able to apply what, properly. Are you okay with that point also? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So introduction, who are you and why are you writing? State it, that is the initial aspect. Then why are you interested in this job? Say it, why you are interested? Indicate, indicating why you are what? You are the right person. Then the third one is why you are suited to this job? Why you are suited to this job? Here, bear in mind, there are two aspects, job description, what you are going to do, and the person they are looking for, job, is person what? Specification. Indicate in the letter briefly, why your skills, your strengths aligns with what the organization is what is looking for. Somebody will say, Jawenum, brack. But the bracking should be factual. Don't say something you cannot what authenticate. In a way, in a way, it borders on what? Lying. So be factual. This is not a point to be modest. If you are very good, tell them that you are what? Good. Blow your own trumpet. If you do not blow your own trumpet, don't expect me to come and blow it for you. You have the relevant experience, the abilities, the skills. Indicate that you have all those. And that is what makes you what suited to this particular what job. That is the third aspect of the letter. Then conclusion. And on a positive note, you can say, based on what I've written above, I'm highly positive that this letter will be given the highest consideration it deserves so that I'll be able to contribute but effectively to the growth of your esteemed what organization. I hope you are getting that. Yes, yes sir. sir. 
Uh, so that's what your application letter, because the covering letter, it should be after the address, then application for employment, whatever. The content, first introduce yourself. I am Benedicta, a level 400 students of Garden City University specializing in accountancy. Why are you I'm writing? Good. I'm writing this letter in response to the advertised position of an, a what? An outside position for an intern in your organization. So you've introduced yourself. You've indicated why you are what? Writing. Why are you interested in the job? You have to indicate the show interest. I'm very much interested in the job. You are a student, you are going for an interview. You tell them that you're interested in the job because you've gained a lot of knowledge in your studies. And you believe I, I that you'll be able to put such knowledge to use to help your organization yeah. to what? Achieve the level of performance that they are what looking for. So find a way of showing interest in the post. So why are you suited? And then you conclude and all those things. So these are the components of what? Right. So at the end of the day, you can try Hello. to improve a particular a job Hello, vacancy. Sir. Yeah, go on. I'm right. I'm yeah, right. I think I'm someone wants to ask a question. Someone okay. wants to Go on. Someone was asking if the letter can exceed a page. Someone was asking if the letter can exceed a page. Oh, you need not. That this one also it depends on the type of job that they are what looking for. For example, when we are applying for a high level position, managing the uh, director or whatever, it might what possibly demand more. But you can do a lot in just one page. Don't write a lot. You can sell yourself very well using just what? One page. And even okay. your CV, the employer might not have time to what? Go over a 10-page CV. Might not be what? Relevant. They might not get the time. This one also depends on what? The job and the level that you are what? Applying for. So a lot of things come into play in deciding the length of your CV and also the length of what your covering letter. But the caveat here is that if you can make it concise, don't complicate issues by writing what? A three page covering letter. It's a waste of time. Our advice, make it one page. Do you hear that? I advise that you make it what? Just one page. So that is very, very important. Just somebody just interfering with the slide. Making some things there. Do you get that? Uh huh. So one page is the best. Do you get that? But if you make it more than one page, you've not committed any sin. But make it concise. One page is okay. You can sell yourself using one word page. That's all about bringing in relevant what information. Sometimes it's when you bring in irrelevant information that you get to about three or four pages of what, covering letter. It's not necessary, one page is enough. Okay. If, depending on the job you're applying for, if you bring in two pages, you've committed no sin. But I advise that, make it concise. One page covering letter, it's okay. Is that okay? Okay, okay sir. Uh -huh. Then the CV also, make sure, sure that if you can do it or you can't do it, get help. Making sure that is what? properly aligned, very presentable. Do you get that? Uh -huh. So you can just take it to a, a communication center. No, we don't even now have communication center. A printing cafe, that's what we call a cafe. So that a professional person will what, be able to do it for you. But basically, you must learn how to do that for yourself. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. So that is what, Please, wanted to do this particular evening to teach you what you have to do to get an effective word CV. As I said, a CV is supposed to give you the opportunity for an interview. So when you are invited for an interview, the CV has done its job. 
Now the time is for you to go to an interview session and prove yourself. Justify yourself that you are the best person for what? That particular role. Any questions so far? So show by hands those of you that have been able to put something together. That can constitute a basic Hello, sir. Yeah, go on. I wanted to ask a question, but not on the on the um, cover letter. The one that we did, the volunteer work and the experience, work uh -huh. experience. I okay. wanted to ask that, please, um, can it be the same? Uh, can they be the same? The volunteer yeah. work and the work experience, can volunteer it be work. the same? Because okay. voluntary, you are working with someone Oh, can they be the same? Yes, that is what that is what I said. You get that? What is the essence okay. of going for voluntary work? Apart from everything, it's supposed to give you what the requisite work experience. I hope you you are, you are getting it. Yes. Okay. Okay. When you work Thank through you. the voluntary service that you yes, render, sir. and you get an experience. One way is that you can feature those experiences under the work what experience. This is also another okay. issue. Why sometimes we separate it? Some people consider okay. work experience to constitute paid work. I don't know if you are getting it. To constitute work experience, yes, to constitute work that you were paid for, either in kind or in monetary terms. But in voluntary services, you are not what we paid for. And for that matter, an employer will cons consider that not to be what a work experience because it was not what paid for. But to me, there shouldn't be much of what a distinction. Do you get that? But you can bring clarity into the situation when you are able to list separately your work experience in, constituting paid work experience. Then you have another session for what voluntary service, indicating what you've done. Uh -huh. You are not so much what paid for. Another issue is that some voluntary service, in a way, might show that you have an experience, but it might not, in a way, indicate some experience that are relevant to the role, but indirectly, indirectly will be what serving you. Example. If you are a person that have what contributed a lot in providing mentorship to disadvantaged what students, this possibly might not what a direct work experience, but it might be very very important when you are applying for a particular what position. For example, when you are employed, the organization will want you to mentor your what the junior colleagues. The skill that you have, they want you to what pass on that skill to the junior what employees. It's a very very good thing, but it's possibly not what a work experience. In this situation, you ought to separate the work experience from the voluntary what experience. I don't know if you are getting me. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So the answer is that you can feature some of the voluntary work experience that are relevant in the work experience, especially when you did that voluntary service in a credible work organization. You can put it under that. Other than that, you can separate it. When you separate it, the work experience will constitute paid work experience, work that you did that way, you were what paid for. And the voluntary services will constitute what? The things that you did that you were not what paid for. So the decision can be what yours. Either you merge them or you separate them. That also depends on what? The job that you are applying for. And sometimes also the position that you are what applying for. Any question? Hello, sir. Okay, go on. And um, please about the work experiences. Do you also mm -hmm. have to add the responsibilities to each experience that you had to the CV, yes. or it's only yes. the cover letter that 
it will come there. Okay, now let's go back to the work experience. What I was writing. Uh, okay, uh huh. So before we started, I just wrote lecturer, then bullet point. Then I said that depending on the job you are looking for, and considering the fact that you've attained a lot in the various roles, then when you list the experience, so lecturer, then Garden City date two thousand and this to that. Is this something maybe you've left? Okay, let's go back to some places that you've left already. So when you list that, then just under that, you can just accentuate or you can just bring something great that what you did there. Maybe you worked at a salesperson from the year 2000 to 2002. And in that position, we were able to increase the profitability of the organization, or you were the star performer in that organization. Why don't you write it under it? Because organizations are not just interested in people that will just come and work. They want, or they are interested in people that will come and achieve superior what, performance. But in your previous role, you achieve superior what, performance. You star. Write something just under that. Indicate, indicating that you did something what great. Then the next one, maybe lead consultant, this, this, this. What did you achieve there? Whatever great thing that you achieve, just concisely put it there. Do you get that? But the problem is if they tell you to bring a one page CV, <laughs> when they say bring one page CV, you cannot do a lot of what elaboration. You cannot bring a lot of things what inside. In that case, you need to do that. just be listing the relevant what things. Are you okay with that explanation? Yes. Are you okay? Yes, yes sir. Do you have other questions? So ask questions that bother you so that I'll be able to address them. Yes. Uh, can too many uh, work experiences at different places be a disadvantage? Okay. Okay. So some uh, uh, employer is saying it's too much work experience a disadvantage or advantage. Mm -hmm. They are advantage or disadvantage based on how relevant they are. Do you get that? When you are applying for okay. a job A and you add let's say 100 job experiences, but only 10 are relevant. The 90 are what? Irrelevant, remove them. So whether it's too much or not too much depends on the relevance of the experiences you've indicated. If all the experiences are relevant and you do not have any constraint based on the pages that you can bring, list all. When you have no constraint, if they don't tell you, bring only one page, and you have relevant experience, very relevant, list all of them. You do not know which of the relevant experiences that will do the magic for you to be invited for what? That interview. So the key word is the relevancy or how relevant the job experience is. That's why every job, you need to customize what? Your CV. You look at the job description, present specification, then you go into your card, uh, cardboard or your bag and lift only relevant what experiences and relevant what skills. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. that, that is very, very important. So choose only experience or skills that are what relevant. Sir. So that is very, very important. Any question? Sir. Yeah. Yeah, go on. Okay, maybe if I have 20 relevant work experiences, uh -huh. wouldn't, they, wouldn't they ask why I have worked uh, uh, so many of different places? Maybe mm -hmm. I was okay. having a bad attitude. That's why I couldn't stay at one. Okay. Okay. So that is a very good what question that you've had, you you ask for yourself. That's what some organizations do. They want to look at what your CVs, then they identify what refer as what the gaps. 
from 2000 and this, they realized that it didn't work. Uh, then it came here. So they will look at what the gaps. And in the interview, that is the question that they will be what asking you. What were you doing from 2001 to 2003? Before you go, you should have what? Explanation for that. It could be that within that time, what were you doing? You went for further studies. Though you should have an explanation for what? For the gaps. Do you get that? You should have an explanation for the gaps in your uh, line of what? Experiences. So that is very, very important. But the important thing here is that the work or what we call the CV is supposed to what? Sell you well. So if you realize that there are gaps that you are not going to be able to what? Justify or explain, then you should have a way of what? Putting your CV so that you not throw bad what? Light on you. Okay. If you left an organization from this, then you move that. You should have an explanation what? For that. Do you get that? But if you cannot have an explanation for why you have different what? Gaps in that. That's why you have to put your CV in a way that will not attract what? So much what? Question. But different organizations or different managers look at this what? Differently. In my organization, I'm not being interested in the gaps. My interest is in your ability to get the work what? Done. The reason being that employees leave the organization for various what? Reasons. If you leave or you are in an organization and you are working in a toxic what? Environment, obviously, for your mental health problems, you are not going to what? Instead in say, staying what? Yeah. You might want to what? Go on to another. I hope you are, you are, you are getting me. Do you get that? Yeah. So, so far as the experience is relevant, and you believe that that experience is going to what market you what well, indicating the skills you've developed from all those experiences. I market you well, but the other aspect is, when they ask you why you have different what experiences, you should be in position to what justify that. You should be in position to what justify that. Okay, you put an example. You write that you have what only two experiences. Are you not going to add dates? Do you get that? Are you not going to what add dates? If you add dates and say 2001, okay, 2005 to let's say 2009, then the next one is what 2011 to 2000 and what let's say 13. There is gap there. An employer will want to find out why the gap in what that experience. You should be in position to what? Say it. Look at that. You should be in position to what? Say it. Unless you are sacked. If you were all the positions that you were going, you were sacked. That means you cannot justify the gaps very, very well. It means it's going to be in what? Your disadvantage. So don't put something in your CV that will disadvantage what? You. I hope you are getting that. Yes, yeah. CV, that will what disadvantage you. So if you put more experiences there, and the reason why you are leaving experience, you have a lot of experience, is that you were just hopping jobs. And the reason is that you have been you've been what? People have been what sucking you. Then it will not be in your interest to put a lot of what things that will attract what a lot of questions. So whatever you put in your CV, whether long experience or short experience. They should be working, helping you, instead of what? Harming you. So if you put more long, uh, more what? Work experiences, and it will be of your advantage, do that. But if it's going to be of your disadvantage, don't do that. That's why it's very, very important to understand the organization you are what? Applying to. What is important to them? Are they interested in getting the job done? Or they are interested in what? You just stay in with them? without what, contributing much. I don't know if I've answered your question. Yes, you have. Uh -huh. So whatever you put in your CV to be helping you, to be marketing what you will. Do you get that? Uh -huh. So that is very important. Do you have other questions? No, no, sir. 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 Sir.
Yeah, go yes. on. Yes. Sir. Yeah, go on, please. He said, in writing of the CV, how many pages should it take? I said, your CV should be as concise as possible. Organizations might not get the time to go over what a lot of what. Let's assume you are the HR, then you've received about what thousand application. Do you think you are going to get time to look through ten page CV from every applicant? You are going to be stressed out, so you not get the time. So you'll be interested in what very short CVs. It should be concise but very informative. That is a caveat. So the number is not the issue. It should be information. Uh, well, very informative. It should market you well. It should be concise. That means you should be too much. So if one page can do the job, don't make it two. So the answer is that it shouldn't be what number of pages. If even one page can then can what just do it. Make it one page. If two pages can do it, then make it two pages. But the, the, the issue is when in that particular position, the amount of job experiences indicating your competence is vital. And there is the need for you to what, list all of the job experiences. Then you cannot say that you are going to give them what two pay CV. Do you get it? Example, you are going to apply for a, the job as a lecturer. And in the job as a lecturer, your publication or your research work output is very, very important. And you've published about, let's say, 20 or 30. When you add all, it's going to throw more light on you. You have 20, then under publication, you are just, you've stated only what, two. The assumption is that you have only two publications. That will work against you. So in this particular situation, one publication is very of good essence, then you have 20. List all. So when you list all, and at the end of the day, let's say you have what, five page, it's in your advantage. Okay, here, do whatever that makes you well. Take into consideration also how informative, informative your what CV is. Somebody will be able to put forward, let's say, 10 page CV and they are all irrelevant information. Somebody will be able to put forward what two page CV and they contain all relevant information. So in this situation, the amount of page is not the issue. The issue is the relevancy or how relevant the information that you've what, put forward. But my answer here is that your CV basically shouldn't be what? Too many pages. It should be concise, but very informative. If one page can do the job and sell you well, there is no issue. If two pages can do the job and sell you well, if 10 page is there, but it's not selling you well, it's a waste of your time. So your CV should be informative, should be concise. Then the amount of the pages will also depend on the job you are what, applying for and the position you are applying for. For example, when you are applying for a manage, management what, position, they will require more from you in terms of what, what you've done and what you can what, do. But when you are applying for a very low position, it may not require what? It may need, just need what? Only one page. I hope you've been answered. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Any other question? Yes, sir. Here, yeah, go on. Uh, under the reference. Okay. Maybe I work under you as, as a sales boy. Okay. And I'm supposed to make you the referee. And, uh -huh. and you are no more uh, working at the where where I was I was working. Can I still use you? Okay. Let me say when you are choosing a uh, references or referees, choose people that will give good what testimony of you. Don't take your enemies as your referees. <laughs> you get it? Yes. Uh -huh. so, choose, so choose people that will be able to give a very good testimony on you. 
or good account of what of you. So irrespective of whether the one you are using as referee is still you are still working with that person or is your previous employer, it really doesn't what matter. All matters okay. is that the person knows that you are using him as what a referee, so that whenever he gets information from the employer, you'll be able to what respond. Do you get that? So okay. whether okay. I am you are now with me or I'm your past manager, it really doesn't matter. Unless in the application, they tell you that they need what? Your current employer as your referee. In that case, you have to provide that. But I don't think any organization will, will, will do that. Because your, 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 your present boss will not be very happy in the, knowing that you want to leave what? Your organization. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the response to your question is whether you, your reference is still with you or, or it's not with you. It really doesn't matter. All matters, what matters here is that your referee knows that you are using him as what? Your referee. So that he or she is not going to be what? Taking on our ways when he or she receives information that I've been made what? A referee. Or somebody has taken me as what? A referee or whatever. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Okay. So we have about five minutes. Okay. Yeah, Doc. So if you have other questions. Please, Doc. Doc. Yes, yeah, Doc. Okay, go on, please. Uh -huh, please, I want to find out whether is it advisable to use a relative uh, as a referee? Okay. That's that's what some people were using. But now in organization, in the application, they 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 they, they clarify that they always say that you cannot use your relatives as what? As referees. They state that. Do you get that? But if they do not state that, then you, you have the leverage to use them. But mostly it's not really advisable. When they realize that your referee is your relative. Definitely, they know that the person is not going to give unbiased information about you. They know that if it's your relative, obviously, it's going to what say positive things what about you. So it's not advisable to use what relatives. You use relatives that you have when you have what no choice. Maybe you were in school, you were not free with anybody. You don't have anybody to use as what referee. But the opportunity has come for you to what apply. To you not apply because you have no person to use as referee, and the only person there is your relative. Use that. You get that. So don't put anything that will disadvantage you. Put things that will what give you an advantage. But it's not advantageous or it's not advisable to use relatives as what your references. Okay. Let me ask you what about uh, organizations or organizations say that that you are not supposed to use your relatives as what. Really. And it's also in a way they believe that you are not going to use what your relatives. So don't use your relatives unless you gained your experience in a family business and the head of that business, the manager is what your relative. And who is going to give a comment on your a professional competence? That manager and that manager is what your relative. So you have no choice. Use that person. So do things that will give you advantage. Let me say it again. CV is supposed to provide you the opportunity for what? Interview. And when the CV has done its job of giving you the opportunity for an interview, the CV is no longer what? Relevant. You go to the interview room and justify your inclusion. So do whatever will give you the opportunity for an interview. And when that is achieved, the CV has done its job. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, Doc. But I want to just add something. Can the, the person, should the person be uh, someone at high position or you can just use anybody that you know and okay. the person can? Okay. It also depends on the job that you are looking for. In some job application, they will say that and also the level of what the okay, position that you are applying for. 
For example, when you are planning for the position of what a lecturer, they will want one of your reference to be a person that can give reference on your professional competence. Do you get that? And who can do that? Maybe your HLD in your previous job, he knows your job as what? An, a, a lecturer. So that person will be able to what? Give a comment on how competent you can be what? As a lecturer. So he says that, okay, out of the two references, at least one should be the person that can give what? Comment on your prof, uh, professional what? Competence. In that case, you need to select or choose a person that can do that job. And the other one can be what? Any other person. Do you get that? So you just have to read well the job application. That will tell you what you can do and what you cannot what, do. When they, they, they said just give reference, then they do not, in a way, give more information. Then you can just give two people that will be able to what? In a way, give give comments on what, how honest you are, how good person what you are, based on your experience with you. But mostly it's important to give people or to choose references that can give comment on what, your professional what, competence, and also your credibility as what, as a person. Are you answered? Yes, sir. No. So I can Hello, now address sir. other questions. Then we'll be bringing it to an end. Hello, so, sir. Uh -huh. Please, about the cover letter, will you also include title like a formal letter? Yes. It's, it's a normal application that you write. Normal application. Then after DSA, then the next thing, application for employment as what? A sales what? Person. Then you go on to the body of the letter. I hope you are getting that. Yes. Are you getting that? Yes, please. Uh -huh. Then application for employment as well. This is this. Then you go on to the main body of the letter. That is where I said you should have an introduction. So after application for employment as a lecturer, then you underline it. Then you go to the main body of the letter. Introduction. You have to write who you are. I am professor this, 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 this. Why are you writing? I'm writing in response to your advertised position oh. for a lecturer in the daily graphic, whatever. You've done the introduction. You go on to the next paragraph. Why are you interested in the job? Under that, you have to show what? Interest and knowledge in what? The company. Why are you interested in the job? Do, do you get that? Uh -huh. And before you can show why you are interested in the job, you should have researched the organization, what they do, and show why what you are interested in that. Then the third paragraph, why are you suited for the job? That's why you are going to choose what? The right evidence to indicate that you have this skill, this talent, that is what best fitted to that particular what role. Here, you have to target what? The job description and person what specification. You have to indicate why you can do the job and why you have the skills that will help you to uh, do the job. Then you come to the conclusion. That's why you end positively, indicating this. The conclusion can be this. From what I've said above, I strongly believe that this letter would be given the highest consideration it deserves so that I'll be able to contribute uh, positively in improving the performance of what? Uh, this esteemed organization. Yeah, as you conclude, then yours faithfully, whatever, then you, 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 you go. So that's what the covering letter. Introduction, why you are interested in the job, why you are suited for the job, then you conclude. Then the, the game will close. Then the last question. The last question. Hello, sir. Yeah, go on. Um, please, with a personal profile, what if you uh -huh. don't have active um postal address? Uh, you mean personal detail? Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. The personal okay. detail. So let's go to the personal details and let's see. Uh-huh. So you are saying that you do not have the postal address. Address. That is not what is the essence of the postal address? 
is for them to be able to what, contact you. Yeah. Look at that. If you don't have it, it's not a disadvantage. How can they contact you? Email address is there. Your telephone okay. number is there. Possibly they can send you what? A WhatsApp message or to invite you for what? An interview. What did I say here? The CV is supposed to give you the opportunity for an interview. And before okay. you can get an interview, you should be invited. And how can they send you the invite? Through your email. Nowadays, they do that much. Or through your number, they can call you. So if you do not have a poster address, it's not any problem. Okay, say thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. We've had a wonderful time today. So I expect that you now have your basic CV that you are going to what? work on. When you put your basic CV there, the Career Center is around to help you fine tune it. So you can come to our office any other time then we'll help you to fine tune your CV. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So now, the idea is that you'll be in position to what? Send a very effective CV. After send CV and you are invited for an interview, the question is, how do you defend all that you've said in the interview? How do you perform well? How do you carry yourself in an interview situation? How do you answer the questions that they would ask? For example, what do you bring on board? How do you answer such a question? When they ask you of what? Your expectation when it comes to what? Salary. How do you answer that? So that is the next question that we are going to what? Organize. How to carry yourself. In other words, how to develop what? A very good interviewing what? Skills. How to perform well in an interview. So thank you for your time today. And we want to say very, very thank you for showing interest. So if you have no question, then we are going to call it a day. And as I said, the Career Center is here to help you to be more employable at the end of the day. So we'll be expecting you. So thank you very much for your time and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. The recording. Okay, then we'll find a way of putting the re uh, recorded one on the pages. So those that were not around will be able to consult it. Is that okay? Okay. okay. Thank Hello, you, sir. Bye. Hello, go on. Um, sir, please, can I get your contact, please? I'm Victoria. Oh, are you on campus? No, please. Are you a Codel student? Yes, please. Oh, okay. Yes. So, which uh, which uh, platform are you on? Um, please the twenty twenty three alumni. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Then we'll find a way. We'll find a way of get. So. Okay. Okay. Then. Thank you. Just a, a minute. Then I'll just give you a number so that you'll be able to contact the office. Just a minute. Okay. Just a minute. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. So we have two numbers. Okay. Uh -huh. We have a career center. We have two numbers, 055-77-65-733. Okay. 055-77-65-733. Okay. Take that. Uh -huh. Then we also have another number, which yes, is 059 Mm-hmm. Six nine one seven two zero one zero five nine six nine one seven two zero one. So these are the office numbers. Then you'll be able to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So thank you very much. You can contact the numbers. Then I'll be able to 
be able to be able to serve you very very well. As I said, we are here for you. So do whatever is in your power to ensure that you gain maximum from us. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. God Thank bless you, you very much. All the best. See you later in our programs. Yeah.